Hello, Tom Levecchia here, and you are watching Mobsters, Inc. We have a very special guest today, Frank Fiordolino, ex-Banano associate, um, born in Sicily. Frank Fiordolino, wel welcome to the new Mobsters, Inc., the first live ever. How are you doing today? Good, Tom. Thank you for having me, and uh, congratulations on your new venture here with the uh, Mobsters, Inc. I'm really excited for those that watch us on the rerun or those that are about to watch live now. Um, I worked with George from the UK. He's still working with us. He's the one who grew the channel. But we are going to start doing lives. We're going to start doing interviews. And we're going to really use this channel and this forum to deep dive to all things Cosa Nostra and organized crime. So, Frank, give us where you were born. Give us your background. Tell us a little bit about you. I was born in Castello Monte del Golfo. Um, in 1972, we immigrated to Bushwick, and then after that, we went to uh, Ridgewood, Queens, okay. right on the border. Okay. So, um, Cast uh, Cast Castello Monte del Golfo, yes. Castello Monte del Golfo right. was a hotbed of Cosa Nostra itself, and also specifically the Gambino. I mean, the uh, banana. The banana. Give us a little bit of. Your family, were they connected? Were they in the mob? Give us a little bit about that. Yeah, my family was con um, connected to the mob early on from the 1900s all the way to uh, the present day. I still have family members in the mob. Um, the, 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 my town is the town of Joe Bonanno. Joe Bonanno uh, was born in my town. Joe Bonanno obviously was one of the founding fathers of the five families. And um, before him, Maranzano which yeah. people don't know much about because it was never called the Maranzano family. And that was in, um, after, after he was killed and the, the whole commission was set, Bonanno held that one family. And that was uh, the Bonanno family, also known at one time as the Castello Mariz family. Castello Mariz. Okay. Now, how was it growing up in a Sicilian American neighborhood? It was different. It was different. Um, we, not like a lot of other people, you know, you had people who would go to authorities when they had a problem. We did not. We tended not to. It was a way of of uh, disrespecting the people that we knew from the other side and the people that were around us when we came to New York City. Anything we needed, we we we, we dealt within ourselves. Were your friends' parents mobbed up and were they different from any other parents? Not all my friends' families were mobbed up. Most of them were, okay? So, um, for example, the, the kids I later on piled them around with were about 12, 13 years old. They have, they, a lot of their families, either fathers, uncles, cousins, were associated with organized crime, yes. Yeah. Um, who in your life prior to the John Gotti boom were the biggest gangsters that you were aware of? All right, that's a good question because um, before, I guess, 85, December 85, when the, you get the John Gotti explosion and all that, I didn't know who John Gotti was. A lot yeah. of people, um, not, not not where I was from, you know, uh, most most uh, gangsters, to my knowledge, were Sicilian. Who I, I don't know. Patsy Conti was big in uh, Nickabacker Avenue, uh, the, the Zips, you know. Uh, the Caesar Bavetri, who was dead by then, but but he was a big one. Tony Aiello, who was in jail. Anthony Sal, Sal Catalano. So, of course, Sal Catalano. Um, there was Baldo Amato, you know. So they, they were the bigger ones that I knew. That you, when you talk about organized crime, I, I definitely affiliated them, and I affiliated some of the people I knew uh, over-related to back home in Italy. Got it. So growing up... Um Mob funerals were part and parcel, part and parcel of being in the life. People dying young. And did you go to a lot, of, a lot of mob funerals growing up? And when you went, was it kind of weird as a kid? Yeah, it was a little eerie. It was weird, you know. Um, Italians mourn very, very dramatically. We're emotional people. Not that other people care about their families more than um, we do. But yeah, I don't know if you ever been, and especially when a when when a a family member has been taken away at a young person, a young age. Um. One of the first mob funerals I ever went to was probably, um, no, it was probably, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, Settimo Favio, who was a, relate. My, my cousin Fina was married to him. He was killed. He was shot outside his house um, back in 79. She, they had just gotten married. 
Her father was a made guy in the Bonanno family, Joe Pizzo, who happens to be my first cousin as well. She was my second cousin. She still is my second cousin. And he he, he was one of them. Um, he was one of them and that's, that was covered by journalists, but was covered a little bit wrong and caused a little bit of discord between people I know. He mounted off at the Baccarat game, which was a seasonal Baccarat game, um, ran by the Gambinos and the Bananos. And, um, and and what happened was there was this Frank Bonomo who was a loan shop, and he had lent him money. The guy lost $10,000. Okay. He lost $10,000, and that he was asked to pay back, and he didn't give the response to the old man, Frank Bonomo, who was a Bonanno guy, who was giving him money at the game the right way. Yeah. And they gave him a chance. They said, hey, listen, go go run some H somewhere for us. To squash the thing, he said, "I ain't doing that either." Yeah. They had talking to my cousin, who's dead now, which was my also my godfather, Joe Pizzo. They said, "Look, your son-in-law owes this fucking money. He's mouthing off." He basically said, "It's none of my fucking business." Hey. You know, it's not you know, he, and whatever you want to do. He didn't expect that, and they killed him. He was wow. like twenty-seven years old. My my cousin was never the same after that. So for ten k, they killed him. It was principal after that. I, I think the 10K wasn't so much. They had given them the option. But later on, there was a book called The Days of the Sicilians. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, absolutely. The Last Day of the Sicilians, yeah. The, it was either that one or, or the, the one by Claire Sterling. Yeah, The um, Octopus. It was one or the other. I don't want to misquote. I don't want to give somebody a bad rap. But they had written that that that, that narrative was totally different. And they instead of Frank Benoma, they had put in another person as a person who have uh, lent the money out, yeah, and 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 uh, they were family friends, and my cousin and her best friend didn't talk because of that. And at the end of the day, it wasn't where the story went. Yeah, they, they later found out who the actual killer was. Was this Pizza Caro who was around? Um, he was around that that the, the Caniglia guy. Yeah, Johnny or, or Charlie? Charlie. Okay. And what happened was he shifted over to the to Gambinos at the time, and he ended up flip, flipping on Charlie Caniglia and all that, and his 302s. That story comes out. Until then, nobody knew that he was actually one of the shooters at that at that murder. So really? that was one of the first few. Huh? Wow, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. <laughs> and um, that was one of the first funerals I went to. It was very sad. Bam Mom came. He was called Setamo. He was because he was in, in Italian. That means seventh, yeah. and he was a seventh child. Um, mother, they came from Italy. They didn't want to scare her at the time. Tell her what happened. She might have had a heart attack. She came to the funeral, and, and the poor woman was just devastated. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. here's a guy at a pizza shop just that got married, and uh, just got taken away like that. That's one of the sad stories of uh, Cosa Nostra. Now, at that time. Um... The Bananos were big Sicilian faction. A lot of Sicilians in New York where the Gambinos, another powerhouse at the time, was starting to be Americanized. John Gotti, Neapolitan, Napoletan, and, um, you know, kind of Americanized gangsters. How did how did the Banano Sicilians and the American Cosa Nostra gangsters, how do they operate the same and how do they operate differently in New York? Back then, it was... Um... I tell you, I always say this too. I, I probably people like, well, fucking tired of me repeating myself. Um, the Neapolitans are flashy, man. The Americans are flashy, yeah. and, and the Sicilians ain't. How do they operate? They, they coexisted together. Some of them operated together. You, matter of fact, you had um, one of the Ruggiero brothers, Sal Ruggiero, if I'm correct. He dealt with the, uh, he dealt with Giorgio from Canada. So correct. there was there wasn't like animosity. It was just. Yeah. They, they coexisted. They were part of the same thing. It wasn't like, oh, we, he's a dip and I'm an American. And, yeah. you know, that's that's what people want to hear. It wasn't like that. They 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 were brethren. They got along. Got it. Now, what do you feel about or how do you feel about content providers and even journalists recently? There's a lot of like content providers now, a lot of first party guys. And let's be let's be let's be blunt. They're putting out fake or wrong stuff. Where do right. you land on that? I, it's bad. I mean, because uh, they're getting their shit from Wikipedia. They're getting it from, um, you know, wherever they're getting it from. History. I know one guy. He, um, he there was two sets of Lakatas in the Banana family, and yeah. he, he he made his own narrative that Pete Lakata got killed 
and his nephews, Andy and Joe, were about to take um, uh, vengeance because of his death. They weren't related. They weren't related. Andy and Andy and Joe were not related to Pete Lakata. Two different Lakatas. He made that fucking narrative up. I'm gonna call that bastard out one day because I just don't like him. He likes to write rat this, rat that. I just don't like. And I, yeah, I'm around. I don't give a fuck. But I will call him out one day. Got it. Now, yeah, there's uh, a lot of them. There's that guy who wrote about Carmine Persico. The guy in the Daily News. Oh, uh, Larry McShane. Larry McShane. That guy deserves a fucking beating. Yeah, because he's a friend of mine. <laughs> well, it don't matter. Don't write the wrong fucking shit. Well, you, got you know, the guy's a right guy's a right. If the guy's a, why are you gonna write write something about a guy who did and I and I it's that touch kind of like because me and Ali and one to obviously we're not no more, we're close. And I knew the family. There's no rats in that fucking family. All right. right? And, and, and and it was wrong. Well, I called Larry not long ago, um, and I said to him, I said, Larry, I said, I got a lot of flax on. Just so for those new to the channel, I have another channel called the Armchair NBA. You're going to see a little bit more of me. Um, I'll, I'll share some stuff from over there. I interviewed a lot well, of people. Well, 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 but listen, if, if, if he was such a rat, right, why is his son doing fucking life, okay? Why did his poor son, Larry, who has nothing to do with the life, Larry has some issues I don't want to discuss. Yeah, he got a no-show job, and they kept him in jail, uh, and, and let him out after three weeks. He forgot to go see his uh, probation guy, and they put him back in jail. This, if it was somebody else, he would have never been in jail to begin with. Okay, I mean, and then Sterling Johnson was actually the uh, the judge on that case. Yeah, Carmine wrote him from jail and say, "Look, don't pick on me. Don't pick on my son. My son has had a hard time in life. You know, he's not." He's not part of that life. A lot yeah. of things went on, you know, and, and he wrote to him. Now, and, and Sterling Johnson, you know what he did? He gave it to the Post. He pulled uh, one of those content creator moves to become, yeah. you know, he, you know, he gave his shit to the Post. Other, and, and that that was kind of fucked up. You know, now, if this guy was such a uh, working for the government guy with, with the Sterling Johnson did that, you know? Um, good point. Uh, what about uh, the mob in Sicily wasn't just in, you know, it was in Sicily, mainland Italy, U.S. Claire Sterling talked about how it was like an international powerhouse. Where else did the Sicilian mafiosi have power? Where countries and what type of power did they yield? In France, they were in Marseille, okay. uh, which is Marseille uh, in, yeah, English, yeah. Uh, they, in Caracas, in Venezuela, in, um, in, in Montreal and Toronto. Yeah, scenes were everywhere at one time. Germany. So, specifically in Trapani, the Medimenti, where um, the power shifted. Like, so, so what kind of happened? There was the Palermitani kind of ruled the roost. They were strong, and then the Corleonesi, which included Rina, I think Soluciano Leggio, Bernardo Provenzano. They kind of took over. And the Corleonesi took it involved. And what kind of, how did that change the landscape in the mob in Sicily? And then, if so, what effects did it have here in the U.S.? Um, in the U.S., in, 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 well, the effects in the U.S. is that there wasn't many Corleonesi here. There, there's not. Yeah. Um, as much as Palermo dance here. So when the, when, when, the, when the show was in Palermo, of course, New York was there, was there back and forth. Yeah. But after, um, after Rena, it got a little bit. It got a bit, a little bit uh, dry. It wasn't as. It wasn't as um, that that relationship was dying out. But back to like the Metanamenta and Traben, That's what everything probably is right now, most definitely. Um, and it shifted that way because of the alliances that Rina had with the people in Traben, especially um, uh, the the guy they're looking for right now, who's active. I don't want to Meten mention his name. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's got glasses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what about um? So. You know, Rita took over and he had reach here where, you know, I talked about on my other show that they did kill two in Zarellos. They killed Pietro and Antonino. Um, and that was kind of a deal that I think allegedly was worked out with Paul Castellano. Um, why do you think Rena had to kind of like put the exclamation point by getting two little in Zarellos who ran away? And why do you think he had to kill him on this side? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't. It, it it was, it was. He ended up. He ended up telling him not to come back. I remember that. 
Yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I guess he just probably was if, out of sight, out of mind. He was happy with that. Okay. Let's get to the Giannini crew as to why we're here. Sure. So give us initially, who was the Giannini crew? I know it was kind of made up by the media. but Definitely made up them? by the media. We were kids that grew up together that um wanted a lot for us. So I think I, it, it was a mixture of everything. I think, I think TV, Hollywood had a lot to do with it as well. Um, I, I remember I was talking to somebody coming out and seeing Goodfellas, right? And uh, what was that, 1990? Yeah. <clears throat> and I came, I had a, this out-of-body experience. I said, I want everything that this movie was about. And I could, I could say that it was the same for my friends, too. We were into that culture. And we didn't have to look far. It was happening right in front of us. We knew what was going on. But by that point, we were there for a while, you know, with everything that was going on. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Um, those that are really into the mob stuff know of the Giannini crew. But kind sure. of the mainstream mob people that are into it, and obviously mainstream media, know very little, right? So you hear about the Bath Avenue. You hear about the 20th Street. You hear about the Tanglewood. But you don't hear a sure. lot about the Giannini crew. Giannini crew was different because multiple families and pretty big numbers. What was the peak size, in your opinion, of the Giannini crew? I said a shooter's wise anywhere from 15 to 20 to shoot you. Wow. Okay. Uh, as far as associates of our friends, and we were three groups, I, I'd say probably close to 40. Another thing, too, people compare this and that. People say, well, you know, uh, their families were involved and um, other crews, I'm not going to mention who, their families wasn't involved. We we had to do everything ourselves. There'll never be another Vito Guzzo in the 1990s. After 1990, you could say, yeah, his father was who he was, but I'll tell you what, none of them had anybody as tough as that kid did. Okay, he's doing a, a, a fucking a century, half a century in jail. Got shot eleven fucking times. Okay, if, if he was after you, he'd get you. All right. So you know he was probably, and I knew him. Um, he was probably one of the toughest guys I grew up with. I mean, I mean, and uh, I'm not saying it wasn't tough guys at, at, at anywhere else, but when we talk about just because our families was part of something, that mean we got free passes all the time. I came close to emptying, uh, uh, filling up a fucking trunk, and so did most of my friends too. Don't get that fucked up. Now, um, with Vito guys specifically, um, my research showed that his father went hunting, was killed allegedly because he was having some nervous breakdown, allegedly, and then in kind of like almost a movie type hit, Vito Guzzo got his revenge against what is it Vinny unions shot him and a few other people did he kill anybody in that hit or no yeah it, it, it was some guy messy died M E S I. Uh, he died at that hit you know and we talk about you know what made him so freaking unique so he he basically got the information from that hit from his mentor who had died this dennis gozardo i mean this is what kind of fucking balls this guy had he does the hit goes home because they were going to the funeral. They were going to Dennis's funeral. Yeah. Goes home, gets changed, and then goes to the funeral like nothing happened. So you tell me. You tell me. You tell so me what, which farm team had, had someone like that in it. So one thing I never understood. Oh, yeah, the guy was, was made. He shot at, too. He well, shot. That, that's what I don't get. He hit a – you know, almost killed a made guy. You know, right. Avenged his father's death. Um, right. Goes to jail. And then allegedly gets made in prison. I don't know if that's true or not, but alleged by multiple sources. Yeah, I don't um, know that. I, you know. But, you know, you've been around some hardcore guys. And, you know, why, sure. do, why do you think they didn't seek revenge from him from kill, from almost killing Vinny Unions? I I personally, I think this, I, I speculate on this. I speculated on this already. I think it's because I honestly felt that the other guy was in a reign of uh, um, loyalists and, um, he probably was on the outs with the Persicos. And somebody must have gave him a tip. Look, fuck, do whatever you got to do. Nobody's going to miss him. That's what I think. I, yeah. I could be wrong. All right. I want to go through some of the key members of the Gian Giannini crew. Sure. Uh, in, the, in the blue jacket. And I forgive the uh, fuzziness. But uh, Fabio Bartolotta, guy in the blue right. jacket. Who was Fabio? Fabio was um his mom was arrested in a heroin uh, case. His she mother? Did four years. His mother, yeah. Um, his granddads both died. Uh, no, 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 no. One of his granddads died in prison. Both his granddads were in prison at one time. He's the nephew of 
Paul Ragusa, and his dad did 15 years as well. Got so, it. um, you know, he, he grew up all, you know, in one of those tentacles of the pizza connection case. Now, where did Fabio end up? Did he roll or did he? Uh, uh, he rolled. Yes, he, he rolled. He got into a, a little bit of a, a problem. They were looking to stick a needle in his arm. Okay. Wow. So he, he, yeah, yeah. He had five bodies and he was one of, they asked, you know, they asked me sometimes who was the most surprising guy to have flipped that, that, that when somebody flipped. Yeah. And I would have to say him because of his family's pedigree. You know, if you know the rest of the family, they're, they're hard. They're, they're not fucking, they're not, you know, so that was, some, you know, I grew up with the uncle, Paul. And and no way in the world he'd ever flip. I could bet that. I would have bet, I bet it all that, you know, but. um, Who did he uh, flip against? Do you remember? Shit. A lot of people. Okay. A lot of people. His friends, uh, anybody that were involved in anything with him. Flipped uh, on me, <laughs> but look where I'm at. So that don't matter anymore. But he also flipped on people in my family, and that whatever, it just happens. I can't be saying who flipped on who, whatever. Got it. You know who, when I did it myself. Uh, Anthony Tabita. Yes, Anthony's also part of that click. Anthony was also a shooter. Um, little hot tempered, hot tempered. People have asked me before, who does Gene Burrell, uh, Burrell, um Remind you of Anthony Daffley and same kind of attitude, same kind of I don't care. And then, you know, and um, Anthony was also he also flipped as well. Um, and why you, you gotta remember these kids were looking, they were looking to put needles in their arms. Yeah. Oh, well, it happens, right? I mean, now um, this was actually like a friend and mentor of yours. Who's this? Uh family friend mostly, not a mentor. Uh, that was Baldo Amato. Okay. Now um, we know who he is. He's the bodyguard in the in that Galante. And and describe your relationship with him on the street. It, it was it was it was like family when we were early on, and then as we got older, it was more like you know people from the same town. It wasn't it wasn't cold. It was it was it was okay. I worked for him, you know, but um, it, it was it was what it was. You know, in, in a criminal aspect, I, I worked in his coffee shop. Yeah. Well, you know, the stories make them out to be, you know, they glamorize it a little bit. That was your mentor and all that. Kind I of know. Stuff. I heard that shit, too. You know, I, you, yeah, I, that's one guy I didn't want to flip uh, on. I didn't want to sit on. But the government said, hey, you you know, you're up next again. This is after the Messino case. And, and, and Messino was a bigger guy than him. It wasn't yeah. like uh, it, it, it was about uh, who, me being scared. It was about me knowing this guy for, for all my life and my family as well. D describe what it was like to be on the stand against Joseph Messino. It was it was um it was surreal. Um I felt like walking off a lot of times, like fuck this. They took me from, from A to B to the courthouse. I was staying at, uh, out of state at the time, so they uh drove me in with a helicopter on top Get and a guy with an a yeah, the guy was following us. Wow, and then they, and then we had another guy in the front seat with one of those uh, automatic weapons, and I came out of the courtroom. There it goes, and and I got in the courtroom, but he was defeated by that because I came after Salvatali, and Salvatali took the air out of the hop, uh, hop, hop, that fat hop balloon right there. He he was fucked up. Yeah, you could but, you could see he was defeated. Um, so he but, was looking at me like, "What's up, Bo?" Like he, he didn't give a shit. Now, your era, though, although you grew up around Sicilians, Messino kind of took it over and built the, the uh, bananas back up. What are some of the things right. that he did on the street to kind of build things back up? Um, He started okay. He was, uh, you know, taking the clubs away. Yeah. He was doing all that, you know, you know trying to 86 to the, uh, the loud mouths. The, you know, he didn't want nothing. He was going, he was, he was, he was having a business minded, set, set business minded. I'm making this uh, family go. Um, he was starting to do that. But then he would make silly mistakes. One of them was like, uh, for example, he buys this restaurant. It's the Casablanca. He turns it in. He's not doing well. So he goes to Plan B. He invites everybody in the world and the mob to come over there and eat there. I mean, yeah. talk about, 
you, you know, you want to shut the freaking social clubs, but you want to bring everybody in your uh, your restaurant, yeah, in your restaurant, and and they'd have like that Pat Cooper there once a week. You ever heard of him? Yeah, of course, from Howard Stern. Yeah, you know, that it was always something going on. So I didn't get that. There was a lot of moves that were questionable. Got it. Now, um, want to give uh, another quick photo. Let me just see real quick. Okay. Sure. Um, this is Senator D'Amato. Who's this guy on on the senator's right? Oh, that was Ralph Pichula. He was a kid that we grew up with. And um, he was one of the first kids to uh, get killed. Um, the, and, and an ex-friend of ours in the, that whole Janini uh, crew. What, what did he do to get killed? Um, He was getting too big for his bridges. He thought he was better than everybody. He was doing a lot of shady shit within the last five years. And, um, he, you know, he used to go robbing places. And then and then, and then people were always like, uh, you know, one time he robbed fireworks of a guy for 25 grand. He got caught. It was actually Bobby Glasses' guy. And Bobby then got close to him. And, and he was starting not to do stuff like that. But he was just a freaking, he would pinch people all the time. And yeah. him and, and him and Vito started getting into like uh, tit for tats. And, and, and eventually he got killed. Wow. Found him in a trunk, I heard. Yeah, in Long Island. He got killed. Um they they uh they they took him to it was it was Fabio and Vito. They took him to uh Fabio's house, they killed him, put him in a trunk, and then the next day they they were help looking for him. <laughs> wow. Who's the other guy? It's bad. Huh? Who's the other guy? Um the that well, that's the motto, you know, that guy in the middle. Oh, the motto, the other guy. Joe Gambina, he flipped. He was he started coming or he flipped during the um Vinny Bassia, um, Vinny Bassiano days, and he, right. he flipped on. He actually, he sat on Vinny Bassiano, and I think he sat on Bobby Glasses as well. Um, don't hold me on that. I, I I think so. He was a character. We grew up with him. His uncle was Tony Aiello. His cousin is Anthony Aiello. Yeah. Um, he had to grow up fast. Both his parents were in jail when he was fifteen, and they handed him the coffee shop to take care of, which was the prerequisite to Janini's. It was on Palmetto and Freshmont. It was called Nino's Cafe. And that's Ridgewood? And that's Ridgewood, yeah. And 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 um Janini's 6612, the address, right? In the middle. Nino's was uh right right on the in the corner. Can't believe I I remember that. And uh, he took care of it and they took it away from him. You know, he was uh he was hanging out with older people. He had a little bit of a habit with this stuff. And and um, that was it. Vinny took a liking to him, Bastiano. It seemed like a lot of people Vinny was taking a like to after the casino kind of was on the lines of Joe Gambina with an A. I don't know. And um, that was it. Okay. One of the things that makes it interesting is you had about 30, maybe 40 guys, but they consisted of different families. It seems like, respectfully, a lot of the Bonanno guys – Mm -hmm. that, were kind of, that were like around banana guys and probably groomed to banana guys. A lot of them flipped um, Colombo Gambino guys as well. Who actually made it out of the crew who made it into the life who got made and who's actually out and thriving or out maybe in jail about to come out soon. Who of that crew actually didn't flip and is uh, out and thriving. Anybody? Um, yeah. There's about, there's about 10 to 12 of them that are made. Okay. There's not like one, you know, yeah. like the other farm crews, whatever the fuck you call them. There's <laughs> not one person. There's twelve, maybe eleven. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and a couple of them are coming out too. So back to people, you know. I, I hate the comparisons anyway. I don't yeah. want to start no shit. I'm not that fucking guy. They get here, my 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 farm team is better than you. I, no, I, I don't give a fuck. You know, I could only no, talk no, about what I know about 40, us. 40 guys. Well, let me tell you something. I talked to I talked to a big deal, you know. Well, yeah. Well, well. Then again, to to other people's defense, we covered the whole Ridgewood. We covered Middle Village, Glendale. You go to places like Bensonhurst. There's blocks. There's yeah. And there's a lot of tough kids. So even if there's ten of them, they're tough. You know. Yeah. Um. So let let's give them that kind of credit. You know what I mean? But um. But, you know, but, I talked to a friend of mine. I talked to a friend of mine that was part of that. We're still friends today. He yeah. doesn't give interviews at all. Doesn't yeah. want to. Yeah. He was part of that bad Avenue Beach um crew. Yeah. And um he's a really nice guy. I like him a lot. He's doing really well in life. 
And um, he hasn't never gotten trouble since those days. Yeah. So you guys can figure out who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. And I asked him one time, I, how he goes, we were tough. He goes, but those 20, 20 damn you kids, my cousin Dino's crew and them, they would have rolled all over us. They wanted to go there one time. I don't know how true that is. I don't know nothing about I'm, I'm from Queens. I'm not from, I'm not from um, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, so I don't know, but that's what he was saying. So who better to know than somebody that was in that? Well, clip? you had family relations. Let's talk a little bit about about the 20th Avenue crew. That was pretty serious. Calabro. Uh, well, Sonny me and Cole. me and me and Dino's mom are first cousins. Okay, she's a Fertilino. Um, his uncle was like my uncle. We got the same Which uncle. Dino a, Calabro, right? Dino Calabro on Saracino. That's it. his cousin. They're first cousins. Got it. His dad, Dino's dad, my cousin Dino's dad. And the other Dino's mom are brothers and sisters. Got it. Um, Dino, both Clabro, Dino Clabro is a serious guy. Can you give a little bit about him? Well, yeah, he was he's a serious guy, but he's one of them guys that I I, I you know, if you if I have to put top five of the kids growing up in that, you know, if, if you gave a hit to do or something to do, Vito and Dino would they'd have you dead in a minute. Very calculating, very smart, low speaking, you know, he didn't speak much. Uh, he doesn't speak much. And um you know, he looks like he looks like he couldn't do anything, but then surprise, surprise. Yeah. You know, uh, and then he went very, very old. You know, although yeah. he grew up around Americans, a lot of zip qualities. But he wanted flipping aside, why aside from Brighton. Huh? Well, I mean, I know for obvious reasons, but why specifically do you think he flipped? I I, I don't know, man. He was in trouble. I didn't I, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just I don't know if he had a death penalty case as well. I'm assuming he did. There was a cop involved, and then there was a correction. I think uh, um, an armored truck guy involved too. I don't know. I don't know. Um, one day I'd ask him. You know. Yeah. Now I I, I mean no disrespect by this Frank, but you know I, I've interviewed a lot of guys in the life, and um, it kind of ends with like, oh, I was facing this, so I you know I did this, or I got screwed, I did that. What right. the full disrespect. You surprised by this? Like you knew you, you knew you were gonna face football numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was definitely it, it was definitely uh, bags. Like walk me through that a little bit, you know? Well, it was def it was definitely it was he with jail or uh, a debt. No, I get no, it. What, what I'm getting what I'm getting at is you know what I, I'm an entrepreneur, right? And um I'm gonna invest well, what did you expect are you gonna get into? Yeah, I get I know it. I'm either gonna make a million millions of dollars or I'm gonna go bro broke. But when I go broke, right. it's like you know, and then if I got a way to get out of it, oh man, I went broke. But like, let me let me hurt somebody else as a result. What I'm saying, I, is, I don't you guys know. I was not knew what the outcome in the game was. You and Dino and these other guys. So like, why was it a surprise when you had big numbers, or a surprise when somebody screwed you, or a surprise that you're around? A I whole wasn't surprised. I knew what happened with me. I got yeah. a lot of time. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Oh, and that was it. Okay, that's that. But, but, but you're, honest, but you're was, honest about it, though. All right, Frank. all right, forget about that. But I, I listen. No, but Frank, what I'm saying is, and, I, and you're saying, okay, you're honest about it. You're saying, you know what? I didn't want to do the time. I, well, I don't want to get deported guys, either. And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, I know. Fun. I heard them all. You know, my girlfriend was getting, uh, my friend was banging my girl. I wasn't getting enough money. There's so many of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody told me to take the rap for them. I never heard of that shit. Nobody's ever told anybody to take a rap for anybody. That's yeah. a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, go on the stand and take the 20 years for me. And I'll tell you, what are you, stupid? Who believes that shit? You know, yeah. um, with me, it was that. And then I get the board. It was 27 years on the board. And if I go to, I, I get life, all right? Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, it didn't happen. Like, I didn't go in there with a pen and paper selling me size somewhere. You know, I had to see what was going on. Yeah, you, you know, Sal Vitale flipping to me was like, fuck it, man. This guy made money, was living the fucking life. He had everything. They're gonna if they if they're not surprised he flipped, why are they gonna be surprised when I fucking flip? You know, I'm not Good fucking Sal Vitale. I'm Good not point. fucking Sal uh Sammy the Bull, you know. So whatever. And you know, I mean my I guess my, my family and friends probably thought that that, but they never been in my situation. They go screw themselves too. Good point. Now, um, in retrospect, right, um, you're older now. You've been away from the life. 
you know, you, you do very little. Just came back work. from my friend Jeff's house. We were playing craps out in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But what I'm getting at is like you're a smart guy. I, I do talk to Frank on the phone. Um, we we you know there was history to LCN and and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, but why do you think the nature of a lot of these guys flipping? I I don't buy like it's a little bigger. I, I don't know the psychology too. the psychology yeah. between people who flip. I don't know. I know me. You know what I mean? Um, did I think I was ever going to flip? No. No, no, yeah. no, no. No. Um, I know there's people out there that I get to me and they're like, I would like to ask him what made him flip because they didn't think I was going to flip. Yeah. It's like old friends of mine that want to ask that question. And, and I don't know. I mean, and I tell everybody too, I said this a lot. People are going to say, I'm repeating myself. I like jail. Jail was fun. It was like mm -hmm. hanging out in the coffee shop with my friends. We played cards. I played ball. I had a good time. There was yeah. no pussy. I get it. But that wasn't the reason. I mean, you know, I flipped. Okay. So, but, uh, but you I see, liked but it. so, so I, I, I always try I didn't to cry and blow no snot bubbles. I wasn't yeah. on the phone when, when, when my girlfriend told me she couldn't see me no more. Yeah. I liked jail. Now, I didn't like 27 years of it. Got it. Now, conceptually, right? So, again, being Italian American like we are, or you're you're Italian, I'm Italian American. We come from the same kind of womb culture, that kind of stuff, right? But right. In Italy, although Sicily saw a slight increase in, in informants, not many, right? Calabrian next to none. The Camorra, forget it. They'll wipe out you in six generations. Although mm -hmm. there has been some super grasses, as they call them in Europe, there's been few. So why so many in the U.S. specifically in the Italian American cause in Austria? Versus in Italy, they kind of stayed stayed tight versus the U.S. counterparts. Well, when you're a third or fourth generation Italian, I, yeah. I, and even though you're in Cosa Nostra, how well do you know Cosa Nostra? Yeah, good point. Good point. You know, how well do you know it? You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and there's no repercussions when nobody's getting killed or nobody's getting... Who was the last witness person or uh, family to get shot? That was that P.T. Castle Odo in the sister. 80s. Yeah, Castle. Yeah, you know, so... Well, you know, either. people pray on that, so they're not afraid. The other thing is that super sweet deal, um, Sammy fucking guy. Pay you know, way. well, people start going like, well, what the fuck? I mean, I only got two bodies, so I only got three. This guy got 19. All right, I didn't put away John Gotti, but how's this work? You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and 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 a lot of that, that a lot of that has to go with it. You know, people think that they give these deals to everybody, they don't. You better give them good stuff. So, yeah. you know, everybody thinks they could go to jail. There's a lot of people in the feds right now that told, but they don't know who they are because they didn't tell on nobody and they're in population. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I thought they yeah. would get sweet deals, but they didn't. Yeah. Now, do you think in retrospect, was there, and again, hindsight's 2020, right? But in retrospect, would there have been anything or, or for example, if you were a made guy or if somebody, your uncle came to you and said, we'll take care of your family. Like, would there have been anything that would have made you kind of stand up for, and do that time? Or there was just no way that was happening. Dude, I had legal aids at one point. My, my money was exhausted. I had yeah. nothing. Um, I didn't want to go to trial. I really did want to go to trial. Yeah. I, I just, the government knows who has money at all. They know who you're going to produce, what lawyers, yeah. even when they arrest you, they're like, well, what's this guy going to show up with? You know, I think my case was circumstantial in the beginning. However, it got stronger while I was in jail and people were like, fuck it, I'll talk. He's in jail anyway. We're like, let's talk now. And then I would have showed up. At, at my, and my case did get strong because I started getting charged with stuff only accomplices would know, if you know what I mean. And that's when I knew there was somebody in my case talking. Well, you were um, six days away from trial. That is correct. And, and, but, and they, but they superseded me but the week before. I'll never forget. They superseded me on a robbery and a distribution of drugs, which took me back. Which was basically, they were telling me they had motive. We have the motive to that time. They're telling me without telling me so much. Yeah. We couldn't do it then, and we're going to hit you with more years, okay? Got it. They did that. It, it, and I remember that day because I was in the cell with Joe Messina, Patty, uh, Patty um, Filippo, and um, Johnny Joe Spirito. Oh, I got wow. superseded, and they got superseded. Joe got hit for the three captains again in uh, 
this time the murder, not the conspiracy. And they got another superseding indictment. I don't remember what it was. I think it was something to do with the Giorgio case. Got it. Now, if I could ask. They were just bombing away, bombing and bombing and bombing. Yeah. Now, if I could ask this, of the charges that were against you, were they all true? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and there was ones they couldn't. Um, there's like uh, a shooting they couldn't pin on me, even though they knew it was me because the guy didn't want to talk. So I wanted them to come to court and say, even though I couldn't bring him up, I said, hey, is, is he here in the courtroom yet? Did he shoot you? No. Now, um, at the time, because I, I understand, you obviously, you have to disclose, discovery, that kind of stuff. How many informants were lined up against you, to your knowledge? Fuck. Not many. Not many. Um, three of them, I knew two would double here, say, one they flipped, that became my accomplice. He was at the sea. Um, I would say five. So there wasn't many on, on on the big stuff. Okay. Now Sicilian Frank, right? Who's that? 30, 30, 30 days, 30 days before the trial, right? Was there ever a party right. that was like, you know what? You know, Tom's flipping on me. Joe's flipping on me. Maybe I sent a message out to their family or send a Joe message. Didn't flip back then. He flipped after me, which I was surprised. Um, no, no, no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, I'm just making it. What I'm saying is when, Prior, you know, because you 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 converted over six, you know, six days before, right? Let's say thirty days before, when they're right. like, oh, so and so is 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 testifying, X, Y, and Z is testifying. Whoever um, was ever a part of you, the Sicilian in you, like, get messages out to them. Maybe go after their family. Did ever th did that thought ever cross your mind? No, no, because okay, this is the problem with Italians compared yeah. to other organized crime groups. You don't ever, ever, ever let them know that you're even thinking about flipping because they're going to take, if the guy don't like you, one of somebody out there, they're going to change that narrative and tell you, you flip. No, no. What, what I'm getting at is let, I'm making this up. You knew 30 days before the trial. Yeah. Was I going to reach out for somebody and tell me, hey, do something for me now before I flip? Not before you flip. Reach out. Let's say I'm going to flip on you, right? Yeah. And you find out 30 days before. Were you gonna maybe go after my wife, my mother, my 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 daughter? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, do you ever consider it? I don't want to answer that question because <laughs> yeah, um, people who know me will tell you. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't want to answer it because I flipped and I don't want nothing, you know, yeah. repercussions because it's tough question. How, how how dangerous were you at your peak? I would do anything that. I was told to do anything. Yeah. If it was coming for higher up, anything. So except against women, children. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Within within the guidelines of the mob. Okay. Let's Got get it. that shit straight. I, I like I told you, I never robbed an innocent person in my life. I never put a gun into somebody who went to, to work every day. I didn't do that. But would I have shot somebody done it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I heard you got yeah. tripped up when you were in the program. I during my research. On my initial I know. interview with you, what happened? It, there? it was between me and a girl I was with. It was no big deal. It was her beef. I tried to take care of it, and uh, you you know you meet you meet when when you're alone in life and you're in the fucking you know in the program or wherever you meet people in the strangest places. You're not gonna meet them in church, and you're not you're gonna meet them in casinos. You're gonna meet yeah. them whatever. So you 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 could kind of figure out what I was doing. Got it. Now, um, what do you do now? You're you're driving to the. To the to the uh, the grocery. I told you I was at my friend's Jeff's. I was yeah. playing crabs tonight. No, but here's my question: You drive. You no, drive I'm, I'm, I'm I'm out of town right now, though. No, but you're driving down the road, right? And you get cut off. Sure. You know, um, you 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 know your neighbor, your friends with you see he's getting picked up. Like like the stuff that you used to act on. Now that you see happen to you now. If I see a, 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 a if I see oh, anybody a. a a, a, a Joe Schmo getting picked on or something what, like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get out of my car. What I'm getting at is the old Frank would have handled things one way. How do you squelch that like desire? Because you've been good, you know, you've been clean, you know, you know, in terms of your record and stuff, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't get in trouble. But, but, ha, but, but you're still you. How do you prevent from recidivating? Is what I'm getting at. I mean, I'm not gonna do nothing stupid. I, I hold my tongue. I put my tail between my legs in a lot of incidents. But yeah. I mean, if somebody's bothering somebody, 
I, I'll still swing and ask questions later. <laughs> I mean, well, if somebody's going to bother somebody for no reason in front of you, or, 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 or you know, be a degenerate to a woman, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I don't want to be in that situation, but I will yeah. do what I got to do. So we're going to wrap it up. My final question. And I haven't caught an assault case or anything since I've been out of jail. If any of you people want to make, turn that around. Got it. But before we wrap up, and that's the final question on the initial sure. uh, show on Mobster's Inc. Who's Frank Fertilino today? Who are you today? You always ask me now. I'm, same, I'm not the same person. I hang out with a lot of people. I told you. Um, depends where I'm at. If I'm in Washington State, North Carolina, Virginia, it's all different. You know, I hang out with the nerdy, nerdy people in Seattle. And I hang out with a rougher crowd in um, Virginia, North Carolina. They're, they're, they're military people. So um, that's basically it. I, I got to turn the, the notches up when I'm in the East Coast. I love it. I love it. Listen, uh, for those watching uh, live, thank you for watching. Those on the rerun, this is the new Mobster Zoom. And I want to say one more thing before I forget. Please. With all my friends I grew up and everything like that, our parents did the right thing for us. You know, yeah. um, I, just because our parents were in other lifestyles and stuff didn't mean they wanted the best for us. They didn't yeah. want the cop to kick down our door at 5 30 in the morning searching for their kids. Correct. We we did that to ourselves. Other kids had other ways to to go. And and I, I had a friend of mine that played for the New York Yankees. Okay. Yeah. That I grew up with. Oh, so wow. yeah, some of them are lawyers. Some of the uh, who's the other kid I went to high school with the Elio Facino. People know him. He oh, became oh, a lawyer. Yeah. He went in the military. Yeah. You, you know, we're we're, we're we're we don't see eye to eye in a lot of things. But look, he became he became a good person, you know. So not everybody, not everybody that I grew up with, or our parents, encouraged that life. So I want to, I want, I want to emphasize on that. Got it, uh, Frank Fiorellino. Thanks for coming on, and uh, this right. was the inaugural mobsters.